I don't think nine years or so, professionally since four years. And um, I often have this thing that I try to use things in a way how they're maybe not um, thought of by the developer. So just using um, sometimes shaders to do actual modeling or like weird stuff. And um, I want to talk with you about metaboards because they're a really, really old phenomenon and they're really handy for motion graphics and even for more things. So um, what are those things? Let's see what we're going to talk about. It's what are metaboards more or less. It's not going to be too in-depth because I'm not actually understanding too much of the technical side. Uh, then some basics, how to use them in Blender. Um, yeah, how to bring things together to a more complex project. And then from there, going even more complex and doing advanced uh, rigging techniques. Um, we're going to look at um, base meshes for sculpting with meter balls and then a quick look into how to fake fluid simulations with meter balls and rigid bodies. There's also a small downside but um, later on to that. So what are meter balls? Uh, so who of you guys have uh, used meter balls before? Just a quick hands up. Oh yes, you know what I'm talking about. <laughs> who used it in a recent project? Oh, there's also quite a lot of people. Amazing. Nice that you're also listening to what I say. Um, and is there anyone who doesn't have a clue what I'm talking about right now? Yes. <laughs> Amazing. So just real quick, these are meter balls in their most natural form. Uh, blobby moving things and uh, that's also one of the definitions I thought so G. Scott Owen wrote a nice SIGGRAPH article about this in 1999 I was eight years old then so that's way back and there's uh, from the same year um, another um, article about meter balls and it's saying like meter balls are known as some blobby objects are a type of implicit modeling and implicit modeling just says that you just define um, parameters for your object. So you have the center of the object and the radius and you're not um, actually saying uh, where uh, the vertex point sits on the model. Um, Onto the basics uh, of the usage in Blender with these meter balls, it looks like uh, that. You just have uh, the meter objects into your scene. Uh, they can be animated or they can be static. And as soon as you um, add another copy of the object, you will see you get this nice uh, wielding action. So every time um, a meter ball goes into a close proximity of another object, they will um, yeah, intersect and have this nice wielding movement. Uh, so you can see this again. So again, it jumps together. These are already animated, but animated by hand. Uh, we will uh, later look at how we can improve that. Uh, meter balls also have different types. Um, so when you add a new meter ball, you can change between a capsule, a ball, plane, uh, an ell ellipsoid, which is not regular, and then the cube and the cube you need to turn the view so you can see it's actually a cube um, to get this view of meter boards with the um, red and green ring you actually need to go into the uh, edit mode so yes uh, meter boards have an edit, edit mode and mm, these allow you to uh, further change your um, meter boards and also give you these nice options to change the stiffness per meter ball um, or subtract even meter boards from each other the next thing we need uh, when working with meter balls is grouping. So uh, usually when you start out with this and you add a capsule and a plane and a, um, another ball, they will all um, behave in one blob. So they will all go into the one same object and this will look like this. But maybe we want to have uh, two objects in our scene and we want to have two blobby objects that don't interact with each other. That's quite simple. We just use the um, name of the object and give it a new name. So all the meter objects with the name um, meter ball uh, single will be the parent, the master, and then we have children of that, or not children in a hierarchical order, but in a, a meter ball order with the dot zero zero one dot zero zero two. These will um, always act as the slaves, and they will blob into the same uh, object. So with the knowledge of that, we can already have two characters that are blobby, but not um, wielding together. Um, texturing and coloring and 
Yes, that's possible. <laughs> I was first not sure if it's even possible because I tried to put a texture on and then you get an automatically generated UV. You can then in cycles use the generated um, color te uh, texture coordinates or the object coordinates. But there's also a handy trick to actually uh, color just parts of your object. And this is by using, uh, at least in cycles, uh, gradient textures or uh, other texture types too. Uh, with which you can already change the texture in the render view. Thank you over here. That's just a small example. But we can also introduce a texture coordinate for an empty. So uh, here in the scene, there's an empty. And as soon as I put the, also, also this is not working, so to the cycle steps, if you use the texture coordinate for a different object, it will not show in the material view, but we can see in the rendered view that we are now able to um, change the appearance uh, of the texture and the origin of the texture coordinate um, by an empty. And uh, knowing that we can parent things together in Blender, we can also parent this empty to a meter ball and control the color of this meter ball over a whole scene, animation, and character again. Bringing things together, I'm always talking about this character. <laughs> I'm going to show you a small character now that's just with the basics uh, of parenting in Blender, so set parent and set the color parent. And then we try to go further from that. Yeah, parenting. Good parenting <laughs> helps everyone, not just you, but also the people around you. And the small character I came up with is this little chicken dove type of thing. And for now it's uh, not moving correctly because the colored head did not move with it. But if I parent everything together, I can move the actual um, chicken and the head will stay uh, dark. <laughs> and we can also animate it real, real simple. The animation of that will look something like this, not really animated, just as a preview purpose of uh, what we're doing here. The, uh, we have different kind of meter groups, so the legs and the facial um, parts are done in one group. The other group is inside of this uh, body mesh, which can deform and animate. But we can also use this in a more advanced ca uh, case, and this would be advanced parenting, which is Rigging. Uh, so we just introduced. Where's the pointer of this thing? Ah. So uh, we just introduced this kind of uh, armature into this object, and we're not parenting things uh, onto each other again, but we're parenting to it uh, a control object. Having this control object, now we are able to do more complex uh, hierarchies, and we are able to store the animation of the things into a, a one armature animation, which is handleable by um, an artist. So, and applying this to this complex character I talked about, we ran with this kind of chicken, which maybe could also play another role in the Dweep series. <laughs> uh, and you get this real articulate character. Um, you can have uh, then these simple IK rigs, which work quite well with um, <laughs> this. You can then also scale um, the meter bot, so we have an eyes close, uh, and I'm just scaling the... Um, another meter ball inside of the eyes to uh, double scale, and then the eyes will blink. Um, and also I can then just render this out. This is just for a preview purpose, so the legs are glitching a bit, but in general you can see that it's actually a viable tool to create um, a kind of character. Of course it's a stylized character, but um, you can take this really far and add lots of detail with this, because you always get a, a tessellation on the fly of the meter objects. Uh, to show another uh, quick thing inside of Blender, you can also do it further. And uh, Jim Moran, hi. You, you call it the drumstick attack, I guess. Uh, you can actually pull out the drumstick of the chicken. And I modeled this chicken from Metaboards in its like uh, regular pose. And then taking the uh, chicken leg out of the chicken, it actually looks like a chicken leg, which is quite uh, interesting to me. Uh, another thing we get, we get like nice details um, when the chicken leg uh, moves. It can actually uh, behave quite nice when it's closing and opening, which is hard to get from a uh, real topology. Um, yeah, And then a really huge chicken <laughs> is this one here, which I also found on the SIGGRAPH uh, website, which was uh, done by MetaRace. Um, and I think, if I understand the blog post right, this is made from millions of meter objects that are put together with a plugin, um, but I'm not 
quite sure how they did it. They at least did it with meter balls, which is amazing to me, like the whole dinosaur. Uh, so, guys, go crazy with this. Like, you can rig some characters that are uh, moving in their shape, so you can change the shape while they're animating. You can create a database of characters that can be uh, made from one base mesh, and you can switch the proportions. You can do really a lot of this. You need to figure out a way when the arm gets too close to the body, but that's up to you if you want to keep it or uh, take it as an artistic glitch. So for something completely different, you can also use the meter balls for scope based meshes, which is another thing I found out in my workflow. So I'm a really bad box modeler when it comes to base meshes, because it takes me more time to do this rough base mesh than actually sculpting. Um, so why do I use meter balls for this? I um, I'm can sketch the volume and um, really think about volume uh, in a, on the fly. I have an editable tessellation, so I can change the uh, resolution of my base mesh, how detailed it is from um, really slow, uh, really low to really high. I can wield parts together real easily, so I can have even a library of noses from characters and just drop them onto uh, each other, and they will wield perfectly, and they will have one watertight mesh. And again, like with the characters, I can even um, do variations of one character real easily. And then if I have done the base mesh, I don't need to go in and actually um, sculpt or uh, box model something new, but I can just add parts and do variations of this one character. I actually tried to record lots of these live editing sessions. I did four tries, and I hit record in one session, and this was this. <laughs> it's not even the best one. But um, on the concept art of Roman Zemenko, uh, you can check him out on ArtStation, just to give props to this amazing artist. Um, I tried to do some um, sculpts just to preview uh, or base meshes uh, how this can work. And what you can see is that I'm most of the time working in one side view and then um, the volume gets more or less added automatically and I can play ar around with that um, later on. Then also adding the um, holes of the noses by subtracting a meter ball, which is also possible, uh, to already add detail. Um, while actually doing this um, uh, models of this special artist, I found out that it's really interesting to do like already hair texture with um, the meter balls, so you don't do just the volumes, but you can also start to add details. And when it's done, it can look something like this. And um, these models are um, quite high poly to render them out for you as a graphic, but you can also have them really low poly and have uh, enough space for your own uh, interpretation of the creases. Um, so now you're stuck with a um, meter ball, right? So what to do with that? You cannot edit the pixels, you cannot edit the sculpting, so you need to convert it to a mesh. But this is rather easy. Um, what I recommend you, to you is just to uh, save the file as a meter ball state, and then as an edit state, and you just press Alt and C, and create a mesh out of it, and you can start editing uh, the next second. Um, also, symmetry is locked into my Blender version. Uh, Blender version. And then, but wait, there's more. So we now created a character, uh, a base mesh for a sculpt, but we can also fake fluids with this. Um, and I actually, this is the one where I brought uh, the most practical example, and I just show you really quick how it works. So. I have a rigid body object that um, is behaving in a scene, and I just have this rigid body object, right? It's a sphere that's colliding, it's rigid, and it's not really fluid-like. But I can go there uh, and parent a um, meter ball to this one object and can make lots and lots of copies of this one rigid body object, and I start to get something like a SPH fluid simulation, just in really simple and stupid but it's really easy to edit as an artist because uh, rigid body objects are quite easy to understand for us. We can push them around, we can make walls where they uh, bump off, we can say them to um, be uh, damper, we can say them to be like really bouncy, and we can really nicely art direct our fluid. And this is exactly what I did with the last year's Cycles demo reel. Um, for the um, just intro graphic. Uh, I actually wanted to do like a real fluid simulation for that, but I'm not really proficient with the fluid simulation tool, and I didn't know how to um, actually put things. So I was rendering and rendering and rendering and like baking then again, and uh, I didn't have the really fast workflow. Um, 
doing these uh, meter balls, um, I was able to really control the look of what I'm doing by simulating the um, spheres in a quite, um, how you say it, interactive way. So when I added the meter balls, they would actually um, be more or less in real time on my machine. I could change the simulation and there's a mosquito. Uh, and I had like <laughs> a second, just um, had a real good feedback of the whole thing. Uh, it's going in the wrong direction. Yeah, there's a downside. And there are multiple downsides of this. And I already talked with Yalti about that uh, uh, coming to the characters. Um, you would need to find a really good art style for these characters um, so they don't suffer from this wielding. So if you have characters that are really human and articulate and they have their arms by their sides, this will wheel together and you have a weird look. Maybe this is what you want, maybe this is not what you want. If it's not what you want, you should look into different kind of grouping or then going back to a mesh object. But it's another huge uh, problem, you won't get motion blur on the meter boards. So this comes just down to uh, the way deformation is handled, not in Blender, but in general. You will have constant deformation on all objects and you will not be able to get a real motion vector out of this meter ball object. So what you get is a usual camera motion blur. So if the camera moves around the thing, you will still have natural motion blur. But um, the water, the particles uh, will still be hanging without motion blur and that's uh, also a kind of art direction. If you do the art direction that it doesn't need this kind of motion blur, it's okay. If you actually need it really important, you need to go back to pixel motion blur, which works without using uh, the 3D data, or you upsample your animation, render it at double FPS, and then downsample it again, which is hard on the machines, but not hard to do uh, exactly. Also, there's a small wish <laughs> from me to the developers, maybe. If we could export a meshed version of MetaBots into a Lambic, that would be amazing. Because afterwards, we could import this meshed version with like the whole animation as a, a Lambic file, and you would be able to add modifiers on that. You would be able to uh, do changes on a frame basis and all the uh, perfect things you get from a Lambic files. But I have no idea how <laughs> expensive or like in workforce how um, how hard it is to do that, actually. Um, yeah, just I'm running not out of time. I'm much too quick. So uh, I'm just going back and show another thing. No, that's the wrong direction. Yeah. Just going to show something again, which I maybe skipped a little. And this is the, um, where is it? Is the actual rigging of the thing. Um, so, um, with this chicken, um, I actually was able to use uh, mirroring of the, uh, not the bone structure, of course that, but also the meter boards. So, um, you don't need to worry when mirroring the um, uh, model uh, about the negative uh, scale or anything when you just hit S minus one. So, this is a nice thing. You can uh, still do mirroring quite nicely and it's also helping defining the volume when doing the uh, sculpting. And just um, a small thing about this thing, um, you're just seeing one meter ball and this comes back again to grouping. So the master of your meter ball system needs to be, to be visible to uh, make the mesh show up in your rendering, uh, in your viewport. But you can also um, go into the viewport and uh, disable all meter balls that are slaves and just the master will uh, there and show you the complete mesh because if you wouldn't do that and if you would uh, show all meter boards at once, you would have the problem of your uh, viewport being super cluttered with um, sphere lines that uh, are not actually needed for your um, yeah, character and design. I'm just going to let this run through again and then I'm also done. So, if you have any questions and, are, uh, and you are here at the Blender conference, feel free to poke my brain. There's maybe more that we can do with it, and there's maybe more you can do with it and can really apply it to uh, real projects. Um, 
I'm really uh, happy to be able to be here and to share my uh, experience with Blender and uh, with the tools with you. And come over, pick my brain, ask me questions after the talk, because uh, now I just make space for the next guy and he has some preparation time because my talk was a little bit shorter than thought. Also, if you need me on the web, at Zugamaster, you find me anywhere from the Blender Cloud to Twitter to YouTube. You name it, um, come by, say hello. Bye, thank you. Thank you.